Look, I know you two were close, and I don't want to appear insensitive. But I never liked a Swedish bastard, and I'm glad he's dead. Drink this. Booze will help you cope with things. We weren't close anymore. I know he was mixed up with Debbie. Probably all along. Well, it, it ain't never easy being stupid. Or played for a fool by an Oriental Swedish man with a French name. But if it's any consolation, Blanche, we've all been there. Any ideas on who aired him out? None that I've heard. My boss doesn't want me writing the story. She knows the history and thinks I'm too close to it to get the facts straight. Sometimes history makes for some nicer memories than reality. That doesn't really make much sense. Oh, I know. Dave, can you lend me six hundred dollars? You take a minute to make up your mind. Well, it's good seeing you again, Blanche. Say hi to Mom. I take it you're Butch Patterson. Is that the only way you take it? Is that a sexual innuendo? Yes, it is. It's not a very good one. She was quick on her feet, like one of them, one of them spotty cats that run real fast. I presume, given your presence in my office, you're in the market for a dick. Marissa Delmonico, I'm an actress on the soap opera Tomorrow Never Comes. Oh, well, some would say a star. As a star, I have certain expectations with regard to financial rewards and fringe benefits. We've been negotiating my new contract. Maybe I asked for too much, pushed too hard, but the producer's been very cold lately. And then the rumors started. Let me guess. Involvement with terrorist groups? Not a good typer? Really a transsexual, that type of thing? No. That I'm being written out of the script. Leopard. I beg your pardon? It's a... It's a spotty cat that runs real fast. I think the producer started the rumors himself as a negotiating tactic. But I have to know for sure before I confront him or use it to my advantage in the next round of negotiations. Well, it don't not sound like nothing I can't not do. Provided my wallet walks away from the table feeling bloated. Well, as long as your wallet's not bulimic. I'll tell you what, Marissa. Why don't we stick to words I know? Five grand. That's a little steep, isn't it? I figure you being such a big TV star, you ought to be swimming in it. I'm on Canadian television. Jeez, I'm sorry. Can you swing 500? Well, I'd have to make a few phone calls and pick up some extra babysitting jobs, but I, I think I can manage it. Who do I make the check out to? Cash only. Half up front. Oh, but you don't cotton to leave a no paper trail. What do we do about Vance? Now that the suite is dead, Vance is running loose with that manuscript. We can't allow it to get into the hands of a publisher. Well, the police are still sitting on him at the hotel. I don't possess the same elusive skills as our late friend. That's because you haven't been doing your sit-ups like I told you to. I'm just saying, there's no way I could get to him without being spotted. You'll have to do it. Fine. I'll do it. God, you're such a man. 
You're weak. And worthless. You disgust me. I'll show you who the man is. Hello. This is a uh, police officer. Could you connect me with Vance Van Vandervan's room, please? Look, I don't care what the distributor said. If they want the opening recut, they can foot the bill. No, 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 no. If I use the actors in the title sequence, then I'm into royalties with the union. I don't know. Tell them the director's a temperamental asshole who's got a contract that gives them final creative over everything. Look, look, tell them we went to the mat for them and we would have done it their way, but legal told us to take a powder. Look, look, I gotta go. Do not let me down on this one. It had taken some doing, but I'd managed to get a pin on the producer. Five days a week at the gym chasing his youth. I figured I'd find a way to put the squeeze on him so I could work the case from the inside. Pretty nice shirt you got there, pal. You make those for men? Very funny. Trying to pass the time, prick. No reason for you to get your lady pants all twisty twisty. I prefer to work out alone. I prefer to have sex with other people. Sometimes you don't always get what you want. What exactly is it you do want? Well, I wouldn't mind moving to a new machine or have a stroke and piss my pants. Yeah, shooting off on the phone there, Fancy. You in show business? I'm a very successful producer. <laughs> He's off on the throttle, sunshine. You make Canadian TV. It ain't like it's hard. It was high time Mick learned that when it comes to putting the screws to men in steamy health club change rooms, old Butchie wrote the book. I made a mental note to check if I was gay. Flashing your pearly whites like a dumb moron, you stupid prick, and cocking ear. Word on the street has tell if a man was looking to get a few photographs altered. You're the guy to see. What do you got? Red eye? The only eye I got that's red is my third one. You don't strike me as the type of man to help me out with that. Okay, I'll help. But only if we speak normally and never talk about your anus again. Deal. But I ain't making no promises about the anus part. A couple of photographs of a naked man in a shower. I need you to alter his surroundings. What do you have in mind? Something that wouldn't go over well with his wife or employers. Something that'll give me a bucket full of leverage. Time frame? My office tomorrow morning. Do you have a business card? No, I don't. Here's a copy of this month's Dixieland ass party. My address on the subscription label. God, I love chicken!
Oh, I get it. You come waltzing in here and take your own life so you can frame me for murder. <laughs> the lengths you go to. It's uh, 10 a.m. Tuesday. Jasmine just left the house. She's on her way to kill you. So, Jasmine was coming here to kill me. Which means... Jasmine must have killed the Swede. And the Swede must have lied about reporting back to Hitler. Swede must have been reporting back to Tommy and Jasmine all along. I told them about the manuscript, and Tommy sent Jasmine to my hotel room to kill me and get it. And then Tommy followed her and killed her in my hotel room. Then he leaves the message to make it look like he's on my side and to give himself the perfect alibi. God, I love chicken. So the police hear the message. They think I killed Jasmine, which leaves Tommy single and in possession of the manuscript. Tommy and Debbie must have been working together all along. Jesus, it's so simple. You lose, Rubella. Vance ain't sticking around to take the fall. This pretty bird's gonna fly. Freak are you? What kind of freak that's about to put you over a barrel. You know, I've always wanted to be in show business. I was thinking of a nice juicy part in that soap opera you got. Not a chance. Why don't you eyeball these then? Maybe you'll be persuaded. You know, it really is amazing what you can do with a camera and a computer these days. Ain't no one gonna know they're fakes. Not your family, and not the people who pony up the money for your gig. You're holding a handful of ruin there, pal. So why don't you be smart and play ball? <laughs> what the hell's so funny? First, I was a kid when it happened. Second, he was shot, and... Uh... Finally, I'm pretty sure that I would have shown up on the Zabruder film had I been standing right beside the car holding a machete naked. I didn't kill Kennedy. You wait here. Never met the Pope, and he's not dead. Mm. Unicorns don't exist. Mm. Hallelujah, brother. How's about that job? Fine. And pencil me in as the new lead. I'm gonna need all the perks. Personal assistant per diem, trailer. Final say on all creative. Guaranteed love scene every episode. I'm gonna have to talk to the writers. So give me the names of the people who push pens on this piece of pulp. Impossible. Well, nothing's impossible, Mick. If you don't count putting a rhinoceros up a wiener dog's bum. The names and numbers of the people who write this. Send them to my office first thing in the AM. Otherwise, the photos will be in the hands of the press come noon. Where's your office? The 
copy of this month's all amateur bum parade. Just send them to the address on the subscription label. Morning, fellas. Well, who are you? I'm Thaddeus J. Magellan, the heartbreakingly handsome and ruthless business tycoon who just moved to town. Uh, there's no character named Thaddeus on the show. Well, I guess you didn't get to spit and polish on this thing you called a script. No, I, I felt the show needed some new blood. I guess I forgot to tell you. <laughs> we'll deal with this later. Sorry about that, Ms. Delmonico. Uh, let's just pick up that shot again. We'll take it from your cross from the bar to the phone, okay? Cut! What now? Maybe you didn't read the script, crotch dancer. But Thaddeus is in this scene. Page 12. Mick! What the hell do you think you're doing? Just working a bit of leverage, cinnamon pants. This can't be part of how you solve my case. Look, I spent all last night turning the screws on Mick. I spent all morning bending the ear of the writers. And? And not so fast, baby. They was writing you out of the show. Are you sure? Maybe it was just a plot device disease, like, like a prolonged coma, or a ravaging but triumphant battle with a brain tumor. No. New diet. No fruit. You got scurvy. Dead within a month. Your funeral wasn't even the season finale. The bastards. Both of you need to go back to wardrobe and makeup. But I'm in the right outfit for this scene. Not anymore. I'm afraid our friend here has a new vision for the scene. Rehearsal. And action. Here's your drink, honey. I'm glad you're home. Why, it's all I can do not to kill myself whenever you leave. You look tense. Did you have a difficult day at the office? Damn those Belgians and their Lyme disease machine. You need to relax. The world needs you. Oh, I think you know what relaxes me best, baby. Make sure you get a good shot of my Johnson when you zoom in. <laughs> Okay, everyone, great. Let's just take five minutes before we shoot it. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, name your price, anything. Just walk away. The blackmail, all of it, like none of it ever happened. Well, there is one thing. Even though we've just had the one scene together, I've grown awfully fond of Marissa. Leading man, leading lady, that sort of thing. Geez, you know, it'd break my heart to see her walking the pavement looking for work. That bitch! Did she set all of this up? Well, that don't change the photos or my contract. Marissa's in for the long haul, with a 10% bump in her salary. Otherwise, I'll take down this show and everyone associated with it. Fine. Send a copy of her new contract to my office. I get that. You get back the photos in my contract. We speak in the same language, Buttercup? They'll be on your desk first thing in the morning. Oh, hey. 
just in case you forgot the address. It's a copy of this month's Cajun tit explosion. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. I only wish there was more that I could do for you. Well, maybe we can work something out. Oh, God. Friend of yours? Just another satisfied client. Funny. I never had you pegged for satisfying a woman on any level. You know, Blanche, I'd laugh if that was in any way funny. Why'd you haul your gams down to these here digs? Something big's going down, Butch. First the Swede, now this. 